right. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am here with Georgianne uh, with Montessori Art Mentor, and um, they're one of our sponsors for our homecoming week this week, and we are so grateful to have them with us again. We've had them with us at conferences before. Um, we're just so blessed to have them uh, in our network. So welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for asking me to be here. Absolutely. So if you could start just by giving us um, a little background on your business, um, what inspired you to create it, and a little bit about what you do. Well, I created the art, uh, Montessori Art Mentor as a way of documenting 32 years of teaching that I did in the first free Montessori school in, this, in the country. And it was developed by Nancy Ramush. And um, it has... Um, 13 different sections and each section you could consider to be an album. It's particularly information that helps children make art because the point of the whole Montessori art experience is to give children the right to make authentic works of art because they choose the art form, they know how to do it, they know what they're trying to do, they have an idea and they bring it about. It has um, detailed lessons in each one of these albums and there, there are uh, downloadable materials in them and there are Georgie stories, <laughs> you know, things that come from my experience. So um, they're free, it's free. I do have a donation button and I would appreciate it because um, it allows them, I'm not a hobby, <laughs> I am a, a business. And um, let's see, is there something else I want you to know? Hmm. I think that it's, it was, it is something that has allowed me to be the art teacher I always wanted to be, <laughs> that I wanted to be as a kid. I would make my attic environment into a classroom. And I finally found a way to be an authentic art teacher. Hey, that's wonderful. Um, so, you know, it sounds like you've been involved in and inspired by art for most of your life. So um, what is different about art in a Montessori setting or teaching art in a Montessori setting? Well, there is a, a something that's wonderful. You walk into my classroom and it's a classroom only devoted to the teaching of art, but it has everything that you can imagine in it. It isn't just art because part of what's in the environment is maybe 10 to 15 different art forms that are taught to the children. But then what do they need to know? What do they need to understand about art in order to succeed in doing what they want to do with their idea? So it's a combination of things in the environment that will teach them how to make something and how to understand what they're doing. But the thing that is so wonderful is that they get to choose. So someone can become a person who always paints every year they paint. And they wouldn't think of not painting. <laughs> and so everything that's in a Montessori classroom from practical life, because there's practical life in it, sensorial, the whole breadth of our, of our um, curricul curriculum in Montessori can be in that art room. Absolutely. Um, and for you personally, what has um, being a Montessori art teacher given you in your life? How has it inspired you? Um, and what has Montessori given you as an adult? Well, it's hard to believe that an adult would go into Montessori training and find that when they do all the beginning exercises that are given to young children to learn to read, that 
this dyslexic could finally reasonably figure out how to spell a word, could read it and a word that they came across and actually pronounce it. <laughs> and those were things that I experienced as an adult that I could use the dictionary for the first time. I knew enough about it. And above all, the one piece of equipment in the, in the environment that helped me as a child, that, that I wish I had had as a child, are all the exercises which you do with R, like the exercises for OR and IR and UR. Those were a mystery to me. This, this child I was just would say, but they taught me this, and now they're telling me that, and I just didn't realize that they were all there. So I wanted to be an art teacher, but when I, when I, I went through my undergraduate degree to become an art teacher, I was given a, a place to, to practice that in the Cincinnati Public Schools. I was in a junior high art uh, uh, teacher. But what I found out was that the only person who got really more creative was me because I was telling the children what to do, how to do it. They weren't choosing to do that. They didn't have a choice of whether they painted with me that period or whether they did printmaking with me or built something with uh, clay. I made those decisions in a Montessori classroom that has many things in it and they're always changing and they're repeated every year. You repeat teaching them and on each level you can give them more information. That, that information makes sense then because of the experience they've had before. So when I found Montessori, I was so excited about it. The first time I saw the sensorial materials, I said to the woman who was my, who became my um, trainer, her name was Hilda Rothschild, and I told her, look at this material. You say you give these sensorial materials to three-year-olds, but they contain such such a sophisticated art concepts. How do you teach that? How can you teach that to the children? She kept asking me questions that led me to believe that there was something else that was being taught, <laughs> not what I knew. And so she signed me up. I was just interested in putting my child in her classroom, in, the, in, in Xavier's classroom. But by the time she got done talking to me, I realized that I wanted the Montessori training for myself, even though I was a producing artist. I had gone back to school and had a master's degree in drawing and painting. But for the first time, I could say to myself, I know how to teach children art that is meaningful where they become more creative, not me. I become creative on my own. That's wonderful. What a wonderful anecdote. And for teachers who are currently teaching in a Montessori environment, who are looking for inspiration on how to inspire their children to embrace art, what's the best way for them to interact with your program? And how can they reach out to you personally if they have any questions? Well, the first thing I'd say to do is go to the website, go to curriculum, and see all the different albums. <laughs> I call them sections, but they're really albums of lessons. Then open it up and just go down and look at the pictures. Just keep going down and pictures. Just see what interests you. And then once you see what is available, then how do you start? How do you start your school year? There's practical life to start the school year, and there's practical life and art that you have. They have to learn to use water. <laughs> you can't do anything that is messy, and you have to give up. So they have to have all those abilities to do that, and those are the practical life exercises do that. Where do you start with something simple? Well, go to basic, basic um, skills. I had a seven-year-old child who was so good uh, in making art in, in the children's studio, which was a program I put together for neighborhood children. And I said to him, would you like to learn to make a tetrahedron? He said, no. And he's seven years old and he says, no. 
I mean, even seven year, years old sees a, sees a tetrahedron, they want to make one. So I said, can you tell me what, what, why? Can you, do you have, do you know why you don't want to do that? And he says, yes, I don't, I can't make knots. So here is a child who has gotten to be seven years old without knowing how to tie knots. <laughs> so go to basic skills and then you will know what you can tolerate. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of painting. You can do it without much cleanup. So all these things are available to you. So you can get used to doing it with less messy things. And, and each one of, of, uh, of the lessons go from something that's, even, even if it's weaving, it goes from something simple for five-year-olds up to something that I, you must teach if you're going to continue to educate the nine to 12 year old. They will want much more different and more complex information and ways of doing things than a five year old. So I suggest that you just go and play there. And when you hit a spot where you know what you need to know, then there are two places to get a hold of me because mentor after Montessori art, mentor means something. You can call me. On the phone, I will not answer it because I get so many grandma calls on that phone. I will not answer it. Just leave your name and how you want me to get a hold of you and tell me in general, you know, what the problem is, if you'd like to. Otherwise, I will just call you and find out myself. You can email me, but when you email me, make sure, you know, I am a practicing Montessorian or I'm learning, I'm in training for Montessori. Let me know immediately you are not a robocall <laughs> because I get things on that uh, uh, contact that they're trying to sell me something. They want to sell me something that's better for my, uh, for my website. And I'm not interested in that. I have a webmaster. So tell me right away who you are and what you want. And I will try my best to get back with you in a timely fashion. Thank you. That's great. Um, and I hope that a lot of our member schools and people in our network take advantage of that and take time to really look through all that material. There's just a, a wealth of knowledge and material there. And I really hope that everyone gets to enjoy that and reach out to you um, for additional support, because I think that's really important too. Uh, so that's all the questions that I have for, for you. Is there anything else that you wanted to add about Montessori Art Mentor or about what you do? I truly believe that we all have uh, within us as a human being, the characteristic of being creative. And I just happen to love art, but maybe you like something else. But your creativity is something that's in you. It's part of you. And if you felt that like it doesn't exist, that's not true. And the more you use it, the more you depend upon the fact that I can figure out what to do next. I know who to ask. I know where to go. I know what I want. You will be able to use your creativity for anything, anytime. And I wish you the best of luck in discovering that about yourself. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today. And just as a reminder to everyone watching, we do have our Absorbent Mind Plus Wine event this evening at 7.30 on Zoom. Just a time to get together and chat, network with each other, um, vent about all of the craziness that we're all experiencing right now in the classroom uh, with the pandemic. And just a time to, to, to sit down, have a glass of your favorite beverage, whatever that may be, and just enjoy each other's company. So we hope to see you all there. And again, thank you so much for joining us today with Montessori Art Mentor. We really appreciate it.